In a 1935 notebook, Mark Twain famously said, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. While I'll leave it to you to decide if this holds true in all aspects of life, it certainly applies to Wall Street. There, contrarian indicators often play a crucial role in forecasting stock market trends. For instance, we previously discussed how strong readings from the Institute of Supply Management's Manufacturing Index can actually predict poor returns and vice versa. We also explored the Fear and Greed Index, which indicates that high fear levels in the markets often signal strong buying opportunities. In recent years, it was gloomy when it came to forecasts. Many market observers warned of impending recessions and bad ones. As is often the case, that was a good sign for robust stock market performance. However, this bad mood has recently shifted, and there's optimism in the air. Could this be a cause for concern? I'm Philip Peterson, Chief Investment Strategist at IG Wealth Management. Join me each week as we discuss the trends dominating the investment landscape. It's the week of April 22nd, so listen on as we navigate the living market. According to the July 2023rd Fund Managers Survey by Bank of America, 26% of asset managers then anticipated a hard landing recession, while 64% expected a milder soft landing economic downturn. Only 3% believed a recession was unlikely. Fast forward to April 2024. After markets have rallied consistently since then, only 7% still foresee a severe recession, and now 36% predict no recession at all. Things have completely turned around. The problem here, however, is that expectations of economic recovery have significant implications for Federal Reserve actions. Last year, during peak economic pessimism, markets anticipated up to six rate cuts by central banks. While this didn't mean good things for the economy, that forecast actually bolstered the stock market. Now, expectations have moderated significantly, with half of asset managers expecting two cuts, many only one, and some none at all. In fact, only 38% of them expect longer-term bond yields to even decrease at all by year-end. Despite rising optimism, which pushed up 10-year Treasury yields rapidly in the first quarter, expected selling pressure on stocks did not materialize. Two weeks ago in this podcast, we warned that we were overdue for some potential volatility that at the moment could take the markets you know, lower for any particular reason. And we have seen some volatility. But what about the long run? Should we actually be worried about an improving economy? The sentence itself sounds mad enough, but if you look at the daily market action, that's almost the conclusion you could come to. Now, we don't see it that way. These higher rates and improved economic outlooks are a reflection of the notion that markets expect higher inflation and higher growth. Historical data suggests that a high inflation, high growth environment is a good one for stocks. Commodity prices often thrive under these conditions, as evidenced by this year's strong increase in oil prices, gold, and copper, just to name a few. Meanwhile, fears of a systemic credit event in the United States are subsiding. Geopolitical tensions are still running hot, but their impact on markets has been minimal. The upcoming U.S. election is likely to stir market volatility, with headline risk always being an issue on the daily markets, but we don't foresee any long-term threats. Overall, there are ample reasons for optimism, and this can be felt in the overall mood of market commentators and forecasters. In our team, as usual, we take the balanced approach. While opportunities for growth exist, there are reasons to think that a good geographical diversification approach could be especially useful to portfolios this year. According to the same fund manager survey mentioned earlier, the top two risks for the market are increasing oil prices and increasing 10-year treasury yields. Now let's examine that a little bit here. A significant rise in oil prices could dampen consumer spending and global economic growth, yet it might at the same time boost Canadian stocks. Historically, Canadian stocks tend to perform well when oil prices are strong. You can listen to last week's podcast for more details on this. For the second risk, Further bond yield increases in the United States could hurt growth outlooks, but it would boost the U.S. dollar, providing at least some support to Canadian investors within their U.S. portfolios. In closing our 2024 outlook, we asked what would happen if it went right. At that time, such optimism was not widespread. Now, as this perspective gains traction and becomes closer to the majority view, it's indeed time to listen to Mark Twain's advice, to pause and reflect. Not everything may end up going right, but we don't need it to in order to see good results. I'm Philip Peterson, and this has been the Living Markets Podcast. 
If you've enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to rate it or share it with colleagues and friends. It will help other like-minded individuals find us. Thanks for listening. The content of this podcast, including facts, views, opinions, and recommendations, is not to be used or construed as investment advice and is not an offer or an invitation to buy or sell any security. The content of this podcast should not be relied upon for any purpose, and IG Wealth Management is not responsible for any reliance upon it. This podcast includes forward-looking information that reflects our current expectations or forecasts of future events. Forward-looking information is subject to risks, uncertainties, and assumptions that could cause actual results to differ materially from expressed herein. Our views are subject to change based on market conditions. Commissions, fees, and expenses may be associated with mutual fund investments. Read the prospectus before investing. Mutual funds are not guaranteed, values change frequently, and past performance may not be repeated.